In this video, I'm going to go over a little bit what you can do in graphic scale regarding uh, some shadows. Shadow design in graphic scale is a little bit uh, beginner-esque, I shall say. A lot of the newer versions of pixel-based artwork and software, they have different tools that can handle this. But since we are following as far as a textbook is concerned that does utilize graphic scale, I wanted to just go in a little bit further to help students better understand. Now, I've started off with this shape here, but one thing to remember when you are creating shadows, remember the angle that the shadow is coming from. But also, too, remember that you're going to have that bounce back depending on the ground. So one of the first things I did was, if I go ahead and magnify here, I made the primary outline in the Layers panel. But then I made those hard shadow lines that I'm going to build off of as far as the design goes. Now this is where things get a little bit tricky. In my color palette here, one thing that you have to take into consideration when you are working with shadows and highlights as well is how many colors do you have available for the bit value that you chose to make that can act as shadow elements here. So for instance here, I have a notation that if I'm working with say 112, I'm working with 200, and I'm working with 139 as far as my RGB values. That was what I made these hard shadows down here that you can see. So I'm saying to myself, you know, going one step further in the color palette, I don't really need this navy. I'm working in shades of teal and green. So I can actually come in and reset this value here. So I'll go ahead and type in as far as that shadow that I had and put in those values. But now what I can do is I can actually take it a little bit darker here as far as the overall design is concerned. And that's where you start to get into kind of these gradient palettes that you might work with here. So I could actually go just a teensy weensy bit darker there. There we go. So I'm making that super dark shadow there. Now, what I'm thinking is as far as the light source goes, I'm kind of coming down at an angle here. So what I'm going to do is I had this hard shadow layer, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a new layer. And I'm going to maybe call this, I don't know, drop shadows. These are going to be the shadows that are kind of off to the side, but one of the things that I want to do is I want to take down the opacity of these shadows. I don't want them to be 100%. What you are seeing as far as the baseline shadow lines, that's 100%. So maybe I take this down to maybe say about 65, 66%. We'll say okay. Now, one thing that you should note is notice how the layer changes here. You now have the alpha channel turned on. You'll see why in a moment. So let me go ahead here and grab the magnifier and I'm going to zoom out a second and I'm going to grab my pen tool again. So here I'm going to go ahead, click on my drop down, get my square. I'm working with my new value and what I'm going to be able to do now is let's actually, you know what, we're going to make this a little bit larger here. And now when I click, you see what happens. Let me zoom in here. This is the way that graphic scale handles opacity. So if I go ahead and control Z this and kind of step backwards here, we'll actually come down, maybe do more of a circle there. And I start to kind of draw along here. You see how I'm getting those gaps as far as the opacity value there. Now again, Whenever I'm looking at this super up close, you know, it's hard to tell as far as the shadowing goes. You're going to want to check out as far as your preview window is concerned. But if this is coming along this edge here, I may actually want to spread a little further out here and kind of come back through here. 
and again, as you continue on, then you might actually have a highlight that would go along the edge here that's a little bit lighter. Just like two, so if I came over here, I'd probably have a much darker kind of edge going on here as far as the overall line is concerned. And again, this is one reason that layers are your friend. So, and again, you can turn on and off that layer, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about getting to the point of starting to work with transparencies directly inside of something like graphic scale. As I said, you know, you would have to go through, you may have to do a little cleaning up as far as uh, your shadows are concerned and your highlights in comparison to other software packages that deal in pixel art, just because of the fact that, again, this is a very simplistic version of software. The pro to it is that you do not have a bunch of bells and whistles that could overwhelm, but on the drawback side, there are some quality of life items that you get in later versions of different types of software that you may not be getting here. And that is just kind of giving you a brief overview as far as being able to add in uh, working with shadows.